So I'm going to look at ways you can get the texture of grass. I'm going to go through three different techniques on this. We're going to be using the embossing tool, like in the last lesson, um, and then scotch tape, and then we're going to do a scraffito technique using a scalpel. I'm using a scalpel. You could use a Stanley knife or anything like that, a craft knife. Um, just to show you the effects that each of those three things give. Um, obviously it's grass, it's very small, short stalks. I'm not going to be precious about getting them exactly the directions they're going on the photograph. I've, got, I've picked out one or two larger blades that I'm going to try and um, put in with my embossing tool just to give a, a bit of a reference point, a bit of a direction. But after that I'm just really going to be quite random and loose with everything I'm doing. The colours I'm using are the same that I use for the leaf, exactly the same colour palette um, in Prismacolor and again on hot pressed watercolour paper. So here I'm just going to now take my embossing tool and working on the, the um, idea that the blades are thicker at one end coming to a point so I'm just kind of doing that shape and some random um, flex as well. Having some crossing over. You can make some that are thicker. I think that's going to do. And then I'm just, as usual, working with a base coat of yellow when I'm doing anything green. really quick and scrappy this hatching something that's such a rough texture you don't need to be careful at all when you're colouring and I'm going to go actually to an um, olive green I'm trying to use the side of my pencil a bit keeping these strokes quite choppy and um, scribbly and going in different directions just like the grass does. You can see now some of those embossed lines showing up the darker we get. I'm going to just go back to a paler green. I'm going to use chartreuse and I'm going to push into some of these embossed gaps. And then an even darker green. This is the, um, it's called dark green actually. really choppy and varied now in this. And I'm going to add a bit of orange just to make some sort of brown tones. Still been quite random. Bit of indigo blue. Some more olive green.
And you can see that where I've left the embossed parts, they are showing up really clearly. But other than that, it's just kind of looking quite scribbly. It's not looking um, like separate blades on it yet, but we're just really putting in this darkest, the darkest colours, and then we're going to take out some white highlights using the other two techniques. So I need to get areas really that are as dark tonally as, as that. So just keeping on building up with orange and blue. Should give me those areas. You can sort of work spiky little patterned regions. Keep them in the whole spiky. Um, give them a spiky sense, a spiky feel to them. You know, don't make them definite shaded squares or anything, just patches of dark. And so this is the dark green again. I'm going to use some scotch tape and my embossing tool and just pull out some areas of colour. So just laying it on, do it like that so you can see. I'm pushing through where you want the areas to be removed. Use the same piece of tape over and over. <coughs> it takes quite a while to lose it sticky. can get quite fine lines but generally I say, I would think this is best for if, if you use something like a sharp pencil point to um, push on with anyway but I think this is quite a, a nice one for taking out some of the larger blade shaped blades of grass. So now in those areas that I've taken the colour out I'm going to add some colour back in so I'm going to go in with yellow on some of them and the chartreuse green on others. Just there, so you've got some paler blades against the darker background colour. And then I can use my darker colours. I'm going to use um, a dark brown. So I'm going to use, use this to outline, well, underline 
I suppose, the shadow underneath some of these, just picking out odd single blades where I've got some that look like a nice shape that I want to reinforce. with the dark brown. And a bit of the indigo, really where I want it really, really dark. Just random patches again, appearing in between these blades. Just helps to give a bit of contrast and help lift the brighter colors forwards. Now I'm going to show you the last technique, which is the scruffito technique with the knife. It's not a technique I would recommend using a lot because by its very nature it destroys the surface of your paper. You, you, you are cutting into the paper, you're cutting this, removing the surface layer, uh, not only of the pencil but scratching into the surface of that. You can do it carefully and remove a certain amount of the pigment just from the surface, as I'll explain when I'm demonstrating, but to get anything like um, a sharp enough contrast, you need to be removing a tiny bit of the paper. So it's kind of irreversible, which is why I say just be, use it sparingly. Okay, for this, just a regular scalpel, and like I was saying before, if you, I don't know if you can see very well, if you use the blade flat on to the, so it's, I'm using it really flat, I'm not using the tip, I'm using it quite flat to the paper, and scratch down, you can just remove the colour, but even then you can hear and you'll be able to feel it with your finger that it's roughing up the surface of the paper. But you can get some, keeping it quite flat like that, you can get, you can lighten what's there. So similar, similarly looking to what we did with the tape, so I'd say for, for wider areas that you don't want to be bright white, just lightened, that's fine. But this technique really comes into its own to create really strong contrast. So if I now use a tip, you can see I'm pulling away the surface of the paper. It makes a little worm of paper. But you do get a really bright area revealed. So this, this can be really good if, say, you were drawing somebody's eye and you needed a highlight in it but you forgot where you'd marked the highlight or where you were trying to preserve the highlight and you went over it by accident, then this can be a way that you don't have to lose your whole drawing. You can, you can retrieve it. You can even do it scoring two little lines, say you want it a definite shape there and then pull it out between them. Or pick out tiny little dots. And then just to um, leave them so they're not bright white, just filling them in, but you, you'll notice when you do that can really feel the difference in how the paper is underneath. When when you've embossed it and just pushed the paper in and you, you go over it with your pencil, you, it just feels to go down a nice channel and it's still smooth. 
this is you can feel it's really rough when you're applying the colour and you can see the little pieces of paper all lifting off. This does restore sort of restore the surface of the paper a bit in that you're unifying it again by pushing wax into it and filling them up. But now there will always be a hole technically in the surface of your paper. But there you go. Three different um, techniques for applying the texture of grass.